So, once you get all your materials around, the first thing I do is I take a 12 gauge cleaning brush and just clean the inside of the shell good. If the shell's been shot, you want to give it a water bath and you do want to scrub it out to get black powder, but I go in there one more time to ensure it's good and clean. So what I then have to do is remove the old primer. So to do that, I take this punch and inside the shell, there's a little hole. I stick the punch inside that little hole and then I take this block and I give it, I take my brass hammer, I put this over a hole and I tap on this punch which is ground down so it fits in the flash hole. You could use a 2x4 with a hole drilled in, it doesn't have to be a nice block like this. And that will take the old primer and remove it. So after that, I then want to um, put a new primer in it. So the first thing I do is I take this tool. This tool I found on eBay, I went on an auction for a about eight dollars you can find them for normally less than 20 it's just a 12 gauge priming tool you put it inside there and you carefully get your primer over the hole and then you just want to slowly squeeze down and work this around um, and then you just kind of want to feel to make sure the primer seated but at the same time you don't want to squeeze on it super hard because then you're going to set the primer off and scare the crap out of yourself so then after that the shell is primed the next thing you want to do is put powder into the case or into the shell so I take this little powder measure this is another tool that can be found for less than $20 um, eBay probably has them any gun store or muzzler supply shop or gun show you can normally find them flea markets even I'm using 2F GoX um, generally when you're loading Shotgun shells you use 2F. Um, my exact charge I'm not going to tell you because I don't want you to try to sue me because you follow my instructions on charge size and blew yourself up. But what I'm going to do is I put my black powder in this little can to make it easy. S scoop it out. And then lightly take my finger across the level it off and then I'm going to dump the powder inside the shell after I do that the next step is to put in the wad now like I said you use a in the photo you use 11 gauge wads because Brass shells, the diameter is a little bigger because brass is stronger than plastic, so you can get away with slightly thinner material. And you can see this 11 gauge wand get started, but it's, an, but it's a nice snug fit. I kind of push it in like that. And then I ram it home. It's black powder, so it needs to be compressed. So I give it a nice good tampering and then once you get that the next step is to put the shot so what I do is similar to the powder well I'll adjust this to how much shot I want And 
and then dump it inside the shell. Just lightly tap it just to get it even. Now if I wanted to, I could put another wad on top and that would probably tighten my pattern a bit. But this is just a hunt and practice shot so I'm not too worried. After that I stick a 10 gauge overshot card. Uh, like I said, you want this to be you're using 10 gauge because you really want this to be nice and snug. And give it a nice tapping. And then go over it again with two. And you can see, even without the glue, this is pretty tight. You know, if I just shake it. It's not coming out. But once you do that and you have that and everything's nice and tight, even taking a real light tap with a hammer, you then want to put a layer of wood glue. You don't want to use epoxy or stuff because it'll be impossible to clean out. But just a nice little layer of wood glue. Um... Bring her around like that. And then even take a... Little cloth to clean up some of the extra. But you just want a... Little bit of wood glue around the edge. And now provide a good seal. So especially if you have a double barrel and you load two of them. You don't want the... The one that you didn't fire to come apart from the vibration, so... Or if it's in a hunting coat, you know the shell will stay together. Um, and then you want to let the glue dry. Have it sitting in this possession and let it dry all the way before you move it. So that's pretty much how you do it, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Pull! Cool.